Hi guys, Kotu Tar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, we discussed how to push the notification from the application's backend and we mimicked the application's backend using a Postman collection which contains few FCM APIs. And we also understood what the structure of the API looks like. In this video, we will try to understand how can we come to know where the notifications are getting triggered from. Are they getting triggered from the API or are they getting triggered from the FCM console? And if it is getting triggered from the API, how do we differentiate whether it contains only data or it contains both notification and data? Well, I have already written the code but let's understand what do I mean by this. So just pay attention to what happens in the logcat. Right now, I will trigger the notification from the console. Send text and this is the token. And when I click on test, I receive the notification and you can observe that I got a message, remote message received from console. And now instead of console, if I trigger it from the API, click on this, this contains both the notification and data. And if you see the locket here, I am getting API with notification. And however, if I go back to the Postman collection and send a notification containing only data without containing the notification body, I see that I get a log containing API without notification. So how did I do it? Well, it is pretty simple. If you go to the on message received method, I have written a method called as get notification source and I pass whatever the remote argument that I get as a part of the on message received as an argument to it. And in this particular method, I have written the code to basically identify whether the notification is coming from the console or API with notification and API without notification. And what are these? These are nothing but the enumeration data types that I myself have declared to basically distinguish between different type of sources that I can have for the notifications that are getting triggered. So let's debug this particular line of code and try to understand how exactly this logic works. Let's go back to API and trigger and as you can see here we got the entry point here which is get notification source and here I am getting hold of both the notification and data and if you are wondering what notification contains it contains the title and the text and the other part is data that contains various key value pairs as you can see here it is a hash map so here what I can do is I can check whether notification is not equal to null and data is not equal to null and then check whether data size is zero if data size is zero that basically means the notification is coming from the console but since here data size is not equal to zero that means we are coming from the API but contains the notification as well and that is what you will get as the output and in the same way if I trigger the notification from the console now here we get the notification but the data will be zero you can see here that the data size is zero so that is why it will go here and it will print the output as console you can see that the output is console and if I trigger the notification from the API containing only data without the notification, the notification value would be null and that is why it will go to the else part and the output would be API without notification. And then depending upon what is the source of your notification, you can basically do a switch and handle it differently. And that is what I have done here in the on message received. I have given you the GitHub link to this particular source code at the description below in the video. So please go through this particular code to understand what exactly is happening in the flow. We started with how notification works, what are the ways to trigger the notification from the application itself and then we went on to see how the notification triggered from the FCM console. As a part of that we also had a look at what FCM console looks like and then we basically graduated to triggering the notification from the backend to the app via FCM console and this is basic stuff that you need to know as far as notifications and push notifications in Android. 
uh, some of the advanced things that you can do with push notification is you can change the overall look and feel of how the default push notification looks like when the notification comes in the notification drawer and you can also explore how to do deep linking deep linking would be just an extension on top of what we have learned only the difference is depending upon what you receive here in the data you will decide what you want to do which particular activity you want to show depending upon what data you receive in the push notification payload that is what deep linking is but the concept pretty much remains the same so with this i end the discussion of notifications on code tutor in the next video i will come back with another new topic so stay tuned that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye